The power of the dog. Power How of the dog. powerful. You know, the, the lead up to this movie, the, the Jane Campion film dropping on Netflix, was Benedict Cumberbatch giving this performance that probably going to be nominated for uh, Best Actor. Mm-hmm. I think almost certainly lock it in. Uh, yeah. See, it, 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 it was basically like, let's go see this performance was kind of how I was going into this movie. And I was more so blown away just by how the movie overall was just like so finely crafted. Like it, it was the type of movie that like I, it ended and I just was like, oh, you know, like they, the movie was not what you think it's about the whole time. You think it's, oh, it's about this thing. Oh, it's going to be about this. It's a brother versus brother tale. It's a tale about loneliness and, you know, the the West. It's about uh, a guy who's behind his time and can't fit in with society. Oh, it's now it's about him versus the, the wife. And now it's, you know, there, there's all these, there's always a story about you know, sexuality and coming to terms with your sexuality and, you know, passing that on. And in the end, dude, it's just this fucking revenge, the sexual revenge story. And, Bro, I was just like totally blown away by it. What did you think of Power of the Dog? Yeah, I was very impressed. Liked it a lot. For that same for that very reason. You don't know what's happening mm-hmm. next in this film. Everything's so intentional that there's all these dead ends that you think about as you're watching the movie for the first time. And you're not really sure where it's going. And that's it's just really impressive. And Cumberbatch is so strong in the lead in great part, I think, because he's not the traditional like archetype for a Western man, you know? Like, if we had Chris Hemsworth in this role, it wouldn't be the same. And obviously, Cumberbatch is a world-class actor, but I, I, I think like his, his body type, his traditional roles that we think about directly serve this kind of performance it's really impressive and i think all the credit really know needs to go to jane campion just for crafting uh this intricate and intentional tale obviously adapted off a a book from what the 60s i think it is this tom savage savage book yeah but and i haven't read the book but begs her <laughs> begs begs the question uh, why jane campion hasn't released a movie in uh since 2009 you know because clearly <laughs> she's still as good as it. ever you know she's, yep. she's been wildly wildly uh celebrated for a long time obviously the second uh woman to be nominated for best director first to win the palm d'or con um won best original screenplay back then to for the piano back in 93 celebrated filmmaker but since 2009 she made top of the lake and top of like china girl the elizabeth moss series that's all she did like what the fuck you know <laughs> again why is Catherine bigelow not really doing anything it's the same problem with female directors in hollywood unfortunately yeah you know going back to power of the dog there's there's this tension that just runs throughout the whole movie and the tension is ever shifting depending on what, what two characters are in the frame, you know, cause uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is uh, he's Phil, I believe. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's Phil. Um, and his brother, George, played by Jesse Plemons. They obviously are, you know, two people who have grown apart and uh, Benedict Cumberbatch wants to, you know, still have that, relationship that he once had with his brother whereas george is just kind of like i don't really want anything to do with this person he's rough mm-hmm. and hostile and just unpleasant to be around finds kirsten dunst uh they developed this relationship um you know obviously peter uh played by cody smith mcphee mm-hmm. um kind of the the i don't know the, the, the person on the side who you're kind of like, what what's going on with this character? Like, what what's the role going to be for this character in the movie? At first, kind of feels like the whipping boy and then kind of feels like maybe a, a, a person who can enlighten or help Phil come to terms with himself. And you're always kind of like mm-hmm. shifting, like, what is this person's role? Because I think the, the triangle between 
uh, Phil, Rose, and George is pretty evident. And then as the movie goes on, it starts to shift more and more. And it gets to that final, the final 30 minutes are just totally riveting from, I'd say probably the moment that um, Peter and Phil ride off together until the movie ends. You're just like, what is this movie? What's going to happen here? What's this going to come to? And the way that the tension evolves from, brotherly tension to tension between Phil and the wife to tension between Phil and his parents to is there sexual tension here? Uh, you know, the, the close-ups on the rope and him working on the rope and the way he like moves his hands up and down. There's all these aspects that you're just like, what is this? And then once you can see the ending, I'm sure if we, if I watched it back, it would probably make a lot more sense and I would pick mm-hmm. up on more things, but it's just so expertly crafted and not heavy handed in any way. And it's beautiful. Dude, I mean, it's like in the Montana Hills and just looks yeah. completely. It, it reminded me a lot of Chloe Zhao's uh, movie last year, you know, just in terms yeah. of the like natural aspect of it. Just uh, really just a masterpiece, I thought. So it's New, up New there Zealand. For me. New, yeah, definitely. New Zealand, an effective stand in for Montana. Looked, Who knew? Uh, <laughs> look, looked, looked incredible. Uh, yes, the vistas definitely bring you back to Nomadland, which did win Best Picture, so we might be in for a visual uh, back-to-back at the Oscars to be determined there. Yeah, man. Uh, there's just there's just so much, like, so much good shit there, right? Like, I, I think Cody Smith-McPhee is really impressive. Uh, like, his mannerisms, his, his looks, his stature all serve a purpose in the film he's getting a lot of talk for supporting actor uh buzz and nice to see right because i obviously i think everyone knew about him from x-men where he played nightcrawler and he's also one of the planet of the apes films but hasn't done too much since then and then kind of out of out of nowhere see him in a movie like this i'm like oh shit yeah this guy's the real deal and you know, I think probably because, like uh, Jane Campion, he's from uh, Down Under. Makes sense that perhaps he was on this production. But either way, uh, I, I loved a lot of that red herring with the gloves and the uh, the castration scene, which is super visceral. But like setting you up brutal with Phil and his relationship with wearing gloves, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in general. <laughs> The Phil, the Phil performance, like the menace, the 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 self loathing that we learn about later on, it's all I think really controlled, right? He's not Daniel Plainview in There Will Be Blood, no. blundering and this force of nature destroying everything in his path. He's not that. He's in the same ballpark, perhaps, but it's not that kind of film, and. I mean, once you get the revelations about uh, Bronco Henry, but also then alongside that Cody Smith McPhee understanding those revelations as well. I mean, I think that that scene in the barn is incredible, honestly. No, uh, totally. And the way that he then uses that knowledge to get close to Phil and like find an opening to bring around the way that the movie starts talking about what kind of man would I be if I didn't, uh, you know, protect my mother or stand up for my mother, whatever that is. Um, Just so well done. You know, I thought Cumberbatch was obviously phenomenal in this movie. Um, And I think he plays like the character of Phil, who is obviously a very gruff, hostile, just really unpleasant person to be around. But he he does it in such a way, especially those scenes where he's trying to reconnect with George or have those moments where like you just really feel for him at times, too. You're like, wow, this is a very lonely person who really just filled with pain and hate. And it's uh, like you said, I think it's hard to uh, it's hard to like totally dislike Phil, even though he is such a jackass for most of the movie, because you understand that he's a very lonely, sad person who's projects that pain onto others and to have a character like that and build that understanding i thought was incredibly well done if anything i think the 
the th- most thankless role in this thing is Jesse Plemons, who is an amazing actor, but kind of has played very one note. Just George is very like down the middle. He gets some nice moments between him and Kirsten Dunst, his, who's his actual wife. And I think their their on screen right. chemistry is pretty evident, but like where he gets uh, gets upset and they he says like, it's just nice to not be alone for once. And you kind of understand his longing and his sadness. And right. So th- th- those moments are great. Yeah. And something like that's paid off with just, in the background things where you realize they were living in the same bedroom Mm -hmm. before dunce was in the picture right and yet both of them are still lonely i love the juxtaposition between the ranch and the house the ranch house a lot of a lot of wealth and opulence and high society culture going on in that house you learn that oh yeah phil went to yale He's just a man of the woods in a sense. Huh. Funny how that worked out. Like there's just, I think so many like great red herrings, but it's great touches the way they color things. in. And yeah, it's just, it's just really impressive. The story, the script, everything's right. Again, I really loved uh, the way they set up Bronco Henry and how you learn more about that uh, towards the end. You know, obviously they, they kind of, make sure you understand what's going on when Cody Smith McPhee finds the uh, secret uh, sanctuary by the, by the stream later on in case you weren't picking it up, but yeah, man, I, I, I was, I really liked it. And I just, the unpredictability, not knowing what to expect going in and then watching the film and still not knowing where it's going. I think it's overall, like just an incredible quality. Absolutely. Um, you know, we haven't even really talked that much about Kirsten Dunst, who I think has been definitely having a bit of a career revitalization. Yes. Um, you know, probably since Fargo, really. Um, Correct. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of a, a role from her where you got to see this much range. Um, this might be the best role she's ever been in. You know, you think about like the scenes of her uh breaking down to peter and like especially that that scene where she's totally drunk and crying and kind of going all over the place with him it's very meaty or when she like finds out about the hides not being sold because phil doesn't want the native americans to have them and um her, how she goes about that scene i just think this is a great look for her and could you see her potentially getting a nom as a supporting I actress could. yeah i could for sure um her and probably uh, Anjana Ellis from King Richard are the two that most stand out to me in the early going. And I uh, probably um, got Triana Balfe from Belfast. Yeah. Um, and that's nice. Again, I, I think I agree about Dunst and this being one of her best roles. I mean, apart from like, I don't know, like Marie Antoinette or something, which was so long ago, you know, and, and nice to see the revitalization and, and also just meta sense. Cool to see her acting next to Plemons, as you said, her real life partner. Um, yeah, I uh, I agree about Plemons as well, but also I just don't mind him just kind of being there, you know, because he is such a high floor as a performer, and I feel like so naturally was a great foil and opposite to Phil, you know, throughout the early parts yeah. of the film. That it, it, uh, I think all the casting really worked, and uh, also you get to see Adam Beach for uh, two seconds as the, as the Native American as he's uh, often uh, cast to be. I love him. Yeah, and we ha- you just have Thomason McKenzie, who <laughs> yeah. we talked about just a few weeks ago is in last night in Soho, uh, just being a you know, a maid, a helping hand on the ranch, yeah, not really there. doing much, just there. Play, so playing badminton, or yeah. was it a uh, tennis or whatever they're doing? <laughs> I think they were playing tennis. But she, yeah, I love when she's like, "That was clearly out." <laughs> just like a great line. Um, now the movie's great. Uh, we're going to be talking about it a lot probably in the coming weeks and with yeah. award nominations and everything. Check it out on Netflix. Uh, I heard an interesting discussion about if this could, if this was a best picture winner, how that would be received. And, you know, especially I think the conversation was framed around um, best picture being this award that if it went to a bigger movie could spark more interest into the awards you know if something like west side story were to win or dune 
Yes. People would probably be more likely to say, ah, Academy Awards, they got it right. Something like this feels just so much more likely <laughs> to me to win. You know, mm-hmm. it's like a more artsy film, obviously yeah. a lot of director. Uh, wh- where would you put his chances right now, given what you've seen? Obviously, you've seen more than I have. So, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, for what it's worth, Netflix did share and some of the third party sites did share that Power of the Dog was being watched uh, pretty frequently. Right. It's not like Mank where Mank came out last year and didn't really get watched at the scale you'd expect from a Best Picture nominee anyway. Seeing that people are watching Power of the Dog at least a good amount, which is nice to see. Uh, but yeah, it, it's probably going to come down to whether something more crowd-pleasing ends up coming to the fore, right? We've talked about King Richard and Belfast perhaps being those films. Didn't exactly set the world on fire at the box office. No adult drama really is doing that apart from House of Gucci. West Side Story is about to come out. Reviews are strong. Perhaps this is a runaway hit into Christmas. There might be a lot of enthusiasm for that. But I think it's right there at the top. You know, I think Camp, Campion's kind of clearly the uh, director, uh, front runner here. Yeah, and you know, being she be the first one, first female director to be nominated twice. Crazy that that's even a thing. Still, that 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 is the truth. Um, so I, I think the screenplay deserves a lot of look. Production design, obviously, directing. Cumberbatch versus Will Smith is going to be a showdown until the end, probably. Uh, and Smith, McPhee, and Dunce could get up there too. But best picture, yeah, I don't think we quite know yet, you know, because coming into the season, it's like, oh, Belfast, that's the one. King Richard will be there too, and we, you know, we got to see it, right? But yeah, it, it's it's a contender. It's from this this is the big Netflix one, right? Netflix is definitely pushing Power of the Dog first and foremost. You know, passing is not ahead of it in the pecking order right so they'll campaign the shit out of this yeah absolutely um yeah at least from what i've seen so far it seems like it has a good shot i think licorice pizza um yep. feels like it could also be in the contention and if west side story is as good as people are saying it is um that feels very oscar baby so a lot of a lot of factors so we'll be talking about it all uh real quick on cody smith mcphee He's going to be in the new Elvis movie next year. That's, That's supposed right. to be coming out next year. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Rogers. So uh, he's, he's going to be in some good stuff. I'm happy for him. 